Okay, so it's setting up for the webinar to go directly on Facebook Live. Hi everyone, I want to welcome you here today. Um, thank you for taking the time out of your busy, busy, busy schedule. I know many of you are probably at work right now or um, you are getting ready to go to work or you are at some place um, at home or on the road, who knows, but I want to thank you for coming in today. I have a very special guest and a very um, special friend of mine, uh, Mary Sheen who is a Amazon best-selling author and a public speaking trainer. And without further ado, I definitely want to hand it over to Mary as we will be talking today about what are the misconceptions about public speaking and presentations that we, we all have, we all have to overcome in our lives and get better at. So I definitely want to go over to Mary Sheen so that she can tell us a little bit about her and what she does. There you go, Mary. Thanks, Rocky. Thanks for having me as a guest. I really appreciate your time. And what I'd like to do is start to give you a little bit of background about myself so that you understand where I'm coming from and what, what I have, uh, why I am so passionate about teaching public speaking to people like yourselves. Yes. So my background is a long time ago, I used to be a computer programmer and very self-conscious. And every time I had to speak in front of the group, I would go red in the face and just feel like people were judging me. And so as a result, coming from that aspect, of course, I wouldn't be able to express myself confidently, never mind expressing myself in a way that makes an impact, right? Because right, all right. I was focused on was myself. And so at one point I decided that no, I can't live like this anymore. And also I understood that if I was to be able to get promotions in my job or be able to step out of my little tiny comfort zone, I would have to grow myself. Yes. And so I forced myself to get outside my comfort zone and spoke in front of people, even if I felt uncomfortable. I learned from the best mentors in the world. And through the years of my own experience, I decided to step up my game and started teaching and training. So and now I have to be in front of the group. Now I have to be able to express myself confidently so that the people in my audience would understand what the heck I was talking about. And so it forced me to get outside of my own self-consciousness. And through these many years of teaching and now looking back and now having after taught thousands of people and trained hundreds of individuals around the world, I now have a new perspective of public speaking. And that's why I decided to write the book, which was launched last year in December. And I'll tell you the title of the book. I think you'll get a little giggle out of it. It's called present yourself and present is in quotes, the word present because it's a play on words, present meaning presentations, yes. present meaning being present and present, present meaning gift as well. So a yeah. present, you being in front of the room, you speaking your voice is a gift to the audience because in that moment you're giving them their, their attention, you're giving them your attention, they're giving you your, their attention. Yes. And so it's an exchange of gift, it's an exchange of attention, of time, right? Mm -hmm. And the subtitle of the book is called Tell Your Inner Critic to Shut Up and the real you to speak up. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. And that's what I think resonated with a lot of people because within two weeks of the launch of the book, it became Amazon bestseller. And so I know it's the message is resonating with a lot of people. That is amazing. Within two weeks. That's, yes. that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and, and I think partly because what I cover in the book is what a lot of public speaking education out there does not cover, yes. which is the, the 
gist of what we're a little bit of what we're going to talk about today mm -hmm. a lot of the public speaking education out there what i noticed was they focus on a lot on the mechanics of public speaking which is yeah. how to stand how to use your voice but all of that is important i'm not saying it's not important it's needed you need to be good at that yes but the other side of the picture which people rarely speak about is the inside mind right yes yeah, so true the mm -hmm. mindset so when you are standing in front of a room what's going on in your head the judgments oh my gosh um am i gonna stumble over my words you know are, are am i um communicating clearly for them to understand what i'm saying i don't know i have a heavy accent and sometimes when i get excited i also tend to rush what i'm saying and then i also feel like they're judging me and um you know it, it it's an uncomfortable feeling and that is why i i am fearful of speaking in public because of all those inner critics as you call them pops up in my mind and they may be true or not but i believe them when they do pop up that's right and that's what a lot of people would um what I notice in the classes that I, I teach, in addition to my own experience, that is the major barrier between the person speaking when you speak in front of a room yes. and the audience, right? Have you ever heard, and I'm sure your audience here on Facebook Live have heard of this, the number one fear that people have is public speaking. Have you heard of that? Yes. Yeah. Even over death itself. This is yes. a very common, very, very common um, adage that I hear out there. So here's what I've discovered. That is a myth. People's number one fear is not public speaking. Do you know what it is? It's your mind, your thoughts. It's close. It's not public speaking. It's public judgment. Ah, yes, I agree. I agree. Yes, yes. It's not just syntax. Think about this. It's not the speaking part that you're afraid of. It's the judgment of what people are going to think about you. And that's why I decided to write the book, which is a compilation of all of the processes that I teach in the class. So if you go through the book, you can actually see what the processes are that takes you through how yeah. the, you get over your inner critic, right? Mm -hmm. And a big part of it is we first need to be aware of and then overcome some of the myths and misconceptions about public speaking. Yes. So that we're not stopped when it comes to putting ourselves out there, so to speak, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in front of the room. So the first one I want to address is, you know, what is public speaking? Yes. Right. So when I ask you, what is public speaking? Most people would say, oh, it's somebody, you would maybe have a visual of somebody giving a presentation in front of the room with PowerPoint. Maybe they're on the yes. stage. Maybe they're behind a lectern with a microphone, right? That's public yes. speaking. Yes. Very true. And while that is a form of public speaking, it's not the only form of public speaking. Mm. There's formal presentations. There's also informal presentations. And every time you speak up in a meeting, for example, that's, a pre that's public speaking, right? Because yes. there's more than just one of you in the room and there is people with eyes and ears listening to you, watching you. That's a form of public speaking in job interviews. Yes. Right? Very often. Very important there. That mm -hmm. is important. Yeah, that's a form of public speaking too because you're yeah. out there, you're not just in the room by yourself. There's somebody who's interviewing you. Sometimes in a job interview situation, there are a panelist in, of interviewers. Uh -huh. right? Yes. One person. So that's yeah. even a larger audience for you in terms of how are you presenting yourself? How are you speaking? How are you expressing yourself? When you, for example, go to a coworker or go, go to a boss or a manager, or a team of leaders in your organization and you're advocating a point, whatever that point is, that's a form of public speaking, right? Yes, very you're true. Sitting down in a conference room or even at someone's desk, sitting down, you're not even standing up. That's still a form of public speaking because you are speaking, words are coming out of your mouth, you are expressing yourself and there, there is an audience witnessing you speaking as well as receiving what you're saying and is it making sense to them? How are you coming across? It's mm -hmm. not just the words you say, it's how you say it. How you say it. That's going to present who you are. Yes. In that so, yeah, so, so in essence, Mary, um, everything that we say is a form of public speaking. Right now, yeah. even, right? Yes, right, even right now, right. Yeah. Even though we can't physically see our audience right now, 
right a form of public speaking right yes and I found that from many years of teaching and teaching many people, depending on who you are, there are some people who are more comfortable in front of a smaller crowd. There mm-hmm. are people who prefer a larger crowd because their mentality is, well, if I have a really large crowd and then I speak and then I go away and never see these people again, then, then I prefer that than if it's someone I know intimately every day, see every day, see tomorrow again. If I make a fool out of myself, right. then yes. I have to face these people again tomorrow. Right. Yes. So depending on which angle you're coming from, there's fear or there's confidence on either side, right? Mm-hmm. But, but here's what I'm going to say about that. So that's the first thing I want to get clear about for your audience is public speaking is not just a formal presentation. It's every time you speak or even every time you don't speak. Yes. Right? Very important one too, because the body language, you know, your demeanor. Right. So for example, if you are in a meeting, a group meeting for your team mm-hmm. right, at work, and now the manager says, so who has any comments about that? Or who has any questions? And you do have a question or you do have a comment in your mind that you want to say. But then before you get a chance to open your mouth, that inner critic little voice in your head jumps in and says, oh, what if that's a stupid question? Or, wow, or what if yeah. I say it and it's obvious? What if someone already said that and I wasn't paying attention? Right, right. And so what ends up happening, and that's why I, I found it so critical to address that inner critic, that little voice that speaks to us in our head all the time, all the time. Because if we're not careful, then whatever this little voice is saying, it's going to stop us from talking in the first place. And so we don't end up contributing and what we end up not contributing could have been a very valuable thing. And so what you're doing is, in essence is jipping yourself because you never got to express that opinion, but also you're jipping your audience. Cause if that was a valuable point, then they're going to miss out on hearing that. And so that's so true. That's so true, Mary. I can even remember um, being in meetings like staff meetings and you know, when that time come for everyone to share and to add value to, to whatever we're meeting about um, in, in, you know, in particular to, you know, the functions and, 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 and the, 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 the rules of the job and what the vision in, is for the next uh, month or so, I would just tend to sit back. I remember myself um, sitting back and I know what I have to say is of value but because of fear of that judgment from other people, especially if maybe I'm saying something that potentially my boss don't want to hear, but needs to hear in front of a group setting. And I can remember I started feeling very anxious and then my heart started beating very rapidly. And this is all before I even, you know, muster up the courage to put my hand up to say what I have to say. So definitely, yeah. Yeah. And so, um that the first thing i want to say about that is by the way thank you for being so open and courageous yes. and, and thank you thank you some of these vulnerabilities because yes definitely are, you know so, some people do view that as, as vulnerabilities and why i find it and uh, to bring this up is because person after person after person after person after person that i train that i teach and in my own experience were going through the same thing yes right? So number one, you gotta, you got to really, really be clear about this. What I want to be clear about with your audience is what we're talking about in terms of that negative voice coming up, so normal. Yeah. It's not a you thing. It's not a Raquel thing. It's not a Mary thing. It's a human thing. Okay? Mm, I like that. Mm. There's a background to it. The evolution wise, it, it's trying to keep us safe. That's what the voice is. In the book, I talk all about it. You can go into a lot yes. more detail about it, but at a very, very high level, it's a human thing that we have that little voice because it helps us. It tries to keep us safe, right? Its job is to keep us within our comfort zone, just in case we get hurt, just in case that there's perceived pain that we're anticipating. And so it wants to help us avoid that perceived oncoming pain, whether the pain is physical pain 
or mental and emotional pain from mm-hmm. embarrassment. Yes. Shut mm-hmm. down. I mean, I'm sure we've all had situations in the past where we've been shut down by someone in authority. Yes, yes. And we so, definitely, we all can relate. Yes. Right. And so therefore, we, we don't want to speak up because we want to mm-hmm. avoid that pain, right? See, and pain is really the definition of, my definition of pain is the avoidance of the anticipation of the pain, right? Very true. Yeah. And so what we want to be very careful about is to be aware of that little voice as it's coming up, our inner critic, as it's coming up, live while it's coming up. And it's yes. tricky. It's a yes. sneaky little thing, right? Yeah, yeah. It's so fast. And you, if you're not paying attention, you will just accept it as the reality, accept it as the truth. Oh, what it's saying to me, oh, well, I will be embarrassed if I say this thing, right? And so you buy into it. And mm-hmm. as a result, you don't end up talking. You don't yeah. Speaking you you want to know, Mary? I have a name for mine that I recently came up with. It's called Stupid Rocky. <laughs> Stupid Rocky. That's that's the name of my inner critic. Yeah. It, it comes up. And that's an interesting um, adjective that you, you put in there. And I would even advise you to not to use the word stupid Mm -hmm. because that word stupid has an element of judgment around it. Yes. Yes. But I do encourage you to name your inner critic as Mm -hmm. I did in my world championship speech. Uh, I should mention for those of you who don't know um, in 2009, one of the highlights of my speaking career, and this is how, how far I'm, I'm telling you this story to show you that, this is actually a learnable skill. You don't have to be born with it because I certainly was not born with the, the gift of public speaking and natural, you know, all yeah. of that. that I was not, definitely not born with it. It's something that I learned over time. And so the World Championship of Public Speaking in 2009, every year there's this contest and I competed in it in 2009. There's 25,000 contestants from 14 countries and I came in second place. Wow. Mm -hmm. I bring that up because the speech that I gave, it was a seven minute speech that I gave was about my inner critic and I did name my inner critic and called her Nellie. 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 Um, For those of you who are old enough to remember there used to be, I saw used to watch the reruns of Little House on the Prairie and there was this little nasty little girl whose name was Nellie and she'd always pick on the main character, Laura, She'd always pick in her and and, um, say all these nasty things to her. And that's why I named my inner critic after Nellie, because every time she speaks, it reminds me of Nellie, 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 right? So if you, if you, if you start to recognize that voice and give it a name as it comes up, then you'll start to see it. And why I mention this is because as you start to pay attention to what the negative little voice is saying there's going to be more and more space between you and the little voice enough space in fact so that when it speaks you can say oh there it is again Mm. it's like you're hearing it in slow motion as it's happening yes yes oh there it is again it's coming up and you know what i'm going to do i hear you thank you for keeping me trying to keep me safe Mm. i understand why you're there and i appreciate it and i'm going to speak up anyway and that's the practice. Yes, yes. That is the practice. And so I want to go through some uh, high-level misconceptions and to switch the perspective around so that your audience, the people that are listening, can ha- um, have tools that they can use right away to deal with their little voices. Yes. Okay? So the first, first misconception that I hear a lot is, well, I'm going to wait till I have the confidence and then I'm going to speak up. <laughs> when the confidence comes to me, then I'm going to speak up. Mm-hmm. And that is putting the cart before the horse. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because if you wait for the confidence and then speak up, the confidence will probably never come. Exactly. Right? Because here's the reality is that to feel confident, you need to be competent. Mm. Right? Yes. First mm-hmm. little Hint post-it note that I wrote down here for you guys. Competence leads to confidence. Confidence, yes. And this is not just in public speaking. It's in all kinds of skills, all kinds of um, uh, skill that you might be learning. When you become more competent, and that's when the confidence will come. Very and true. How do you become competent? You do it a lot. <laughs> yes. That's one way. And you get the coaching. You get somebody, a mentor perhaps, to teach you to show you some of the ropes and to bounce ideas off 
to know that there's nothing wrong with you. That's how everyone feels when they learn a new skill. Yes. By the way, I mean, and, and not to be uh, uh, make assumptions about your audience that they're, they're complete beginners when it comes to public speaking. I want to speak to people on all levels because no matter what level you're at as a public speaker, you can always improve. There's always room for improvement. So true. Yeah, there's always something that, that we can always get better at, you know. Right. right. And so we're, we're getting towards the third, third one, which I'll talk about in a minute. But what I want to stress here is when I say uh, being a confident public speaker, I don't necessarily mean, uh, you know, you, you become Tony Robbins or you, you know, but you, what I do mean to say is you become yourself. You become exactly. a fuller, brighter, more expressed, full version of yourself, the best yes. version of yourself. Yes. And that, um, to me, that is a, a representation of, of authenticity. Uh huh. Very true. Big, 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 big word. Very important. Authenticity. Authenticity. If you can yes. be authentically yourself, yes, then that's that's the whole game, right? That is the whole game. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, and I do want to say one more thing about being competent. Uh, when I first started learning public speaking, I had a mentor that I was working with, and I said to my mentor, "Hey, Darren, how do I, how do I become a good speaker?" And he says, "One hundred speeches." And he said, but you're asking the wrong question. The real question should be, how do I become a great speaker? And I ah. said, okay, so how do I become a great speaker? And you know what he said? What? A thousand speeches. <laughs> <laughs> so the more you do it, the better you become at it. That's what he's saying. Right. Yeah. And then, again, I want to emphasize, I don't necessarily mean a formal speech. Mm -hmm. Right. In fact, in my book, I have a free companion journal that you can download companion workbook for free it's a pdf where you can log every time you speak whether it's on stage or you led a meeting or you even spoke up at a meeting you do a little log and so over time you get to quantify and see visually the amount of times that you have spoken because often we don't keep track of that and right. so we don't have measurable um uh, quantifiable measures to see Oh, have we improved? Have we done the practice? Right. And so it feels like we've plateaued or even moving backwards. But if you have this quantifiable measure in front of you, then it's easier to see your progress over time, even yes. if it's just as an incentive or as a motivator at the beginning, right? To do that. So, again, let me just re emphasize that first lesson competence leads to confidence. Mm -hmm. and so what does that mean for you? What does that mean for your audience, for your listeners? Is if you have the urge to speak, be bold. Go ahead, yes. speak. Because every time you speak, it's another little tick on your on your checklist. And yes. that is a win over your inner critic, which is probably telling you not to say it. Yes, and that's where courage, true courage, um, you know, begins. You know, yes. where, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that is so true. Um, there is a there is a book by Susan Dr. Susan Jeffers, the late Dr. Susan Jeffers, which I love. And it's called, the, the title of the book sums it up, which is Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway. Anyways, yeah, I love that. <laughs> so that's the, the sum it up, right? Feel the fear yes. and do it anyway, because competence always leads to confidence. Right. So that's the first one. Mm -hmm. The second misconception that I want to bust is it's not about you. Mm, very, very important one. Because we always think it's about us. We think that what we're saying is about us. Yes, we may share our experience, our pains, our struggles, everything, and, but it's not about us. It's about our audience. Right, right. H however, to, before you get to that point, right, there is this barrier between you and the audience, which is your own head, right? Mm, so yes. Example, if you were in front of a room and you were just about to speak and it happens to be outside your comfort zone, you know, think about this large audience and, and there's, there's your, I hear this a lot from a lot of the people that I train, your superiors are in the room, right? Mm, so yeah. for, for college students, it might be the professors mm -hmm. or people in the corporate world, it might be the managers and the yeah. directors and the director's director, right? Their boss, their boss's boss. So there's this perception of, oh, they know more than me. And so as a result, when you're standing up there, you're just about to speak, your little voice might be going a little bit crazy. Right? Very true. Very true. So there is this fear of judgment and mm -hmm. how that might come across if I was to slow down and put your little voice on loudspeaker, just as you're, <laughs> it mm -hmm. might sound something like this. 
what are they going to think of me? I hope I don't stuff up. I hope I prepared enough. I hope I don't say anything that's going to embarrass myself. I, ho I hope I don't contradict someone and someone in the audience Googles it and goes, no, you're wrong. What you're saying is wrong, right? So there's all of these little voices telling anticipation of the pain. Yes, yes, very true. <laughs> and so if you are doing that and if you're not paying attention that these little voices are actually happening, you're going to think that they're real Mm -hmm. And the illusion of the little voices, because think about it, nobody else can even hear this. It's only in your own head that this is happening. Mm -hmm. And if you're paying attention to all of that, who is the focus on? Me. Me. Focus is on me. Right? Listen to the little voices as it's talking. I hope I don't stuff up. I hope I don't embarrass myself. I hope they don't tell me I'm wrong. I hope like all these things about me, 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 yeah. me. Yeah. The focus is on me, right? And so that's what I'm saying to bust that myth. It's, it's not about you. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, think about it. The main thing that those little voices are afraid of is judgment. Yes. From others. Right. And in fact, judgment from yourself, right? Because you are your own worst critic. Critic. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I felt it necessary to address presence. And that's the title of my book, present yourself present. Mm -hmm. When you are in those little voices, you are not present. You are not in the present moment with your audience. You're in the present moment with your little voices. And so therefore you can't even enjoy the audience. The fact that you are there to give them a gift of your, whatever you're about to say, the value that you have, mm -hmm. that you're prepared well, and you're going to deliver this value. So here's one piece of good news is that, the audience wants, who, who, who does the audience care about? They're, this is how, what I talk about in my trainings. They are on one radio channel, WIIFM. Yes, what's in it for me? Exactly. You know, it, it's not about the speaker. What about me? That's why I'm here, because it's all about me. Yeah. And so here's the good news. When you know that, you know, what's in it for me? The audience is thinking, what's in it for me? They don't care about you. They, I mean, exactly. Not just, I care about me. They know, I know they don't care about me. I know your listeners right now listening. They don't <laughs> care about me they yeah. care about them and how what I have to say might be able to help them, how they can apply exactly. their lives to help them. Right. Exactly. So knowing that, and here's where the pressure comes down, knowing that and remembering that and continuing to remember that mm -hmm. puts the pressure down. Down. Wow. Right. Whew, what a relief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When we look at it from that perspective, it's actually true. Yeah. So, so it's a matter of just switching your perspective a little bit. Yes. So that when those little voices go crazy in front of the room, and by the way, those little voices don't ever leave you. It's not like when you're off stage, they're like, Phew, gone, they're gone. They're always with you. Always right? there. It always. happens to be louder, extra, extra loud when you're outside your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And by the way, just because I'm talking about it, just because I wrote the book about it, it doesn't mean I'm exempt from it. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. And it comes up in other areas too, not just in, in public speaking. You know, I'll give you an example. I, I'm, a, I'm an avid, um, I love martial arts. I love learning martial arts. Yes. And recently, um, I came across another fear within the next level of my learning, which was in, in the sparring, in avoiding an opponent when they're trying to punch you, right? You're supposed to parry them away. And yeah. if you're not present, you're not in the present moment and you're in that little voice, you are going to get punched. You're going to get punched, right? In fact, I did get punched. <laughs> <laughs> Twice within five minutes. Wow. I'm like, oh, my God, that didn't. So that was physical pain. That wasn't even anticipating embarrassment. That was literally physical pain. Physical right? pain, yeah. And so my point in telling you that is my little voices came up loud and clear as soon as I got punched because the fear of voices that I don't want to, I don't want to continue anymore because I might get punched again. Uh -huh. So having push through that, that is the work. That is the practice. And it's the same practice through a process, no matter what skill you're learning, whether it's martial arts, whether it's public speaking, whether it's, um, I don't know, swimming, anything, right? Learning how to drive, right? Remember the first time you learned how to drive and you were like, yeah. oh, I've got to check the mirror, I've got to, you know, fix this and fix that. And now you don't even think about it. You're just, boom, and you're just driving. Right, right, right. right. But at the beginning, there was that fear. Am I going to bump into the car? So my point is, you are the common denominator of all of your experiences, yeah. whether it's public speaking or whether it's anything else new you're learning. So long as you're outside your comfort zone, that fear will come up, that voice yes. will come up and understand in public speaking that it's not about you that mm -hmm. it's about delivering the value to your audience 
-hmm. And so when you look at it from that perspective, and again, it goes back to the competence, practice, practice, going over it again and again and again, for even if it means falling flat on your face over and over again, you get to this point eventually when you're like, oh, I'm over that now. I'm at the next level. But it doesn't happen overnight. And it's not like angels come down and sing and go, no, oh, you're in the next level now. It's yes. a gradual process. Yes. And the confidence comes slowly, 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 but surely. If but surely. That is so true. Yes. And then the third thing, and I guess this is the last thing we'll talk about today, is you don't need to be perfect you just need to just be, be real. real. Oh my gosh. I love, love, love that. Yes. And I'll give you an example. The very, very first time I became a professional trainer, right? I practiced, I practiced, I made sure I, I practiced the material. Like a lot of your listeners, I'm sure are very hardworking individuals. Yes. Who very. Will, mm -hmm. who will get prepared and who will do everything that they need to do to make sure to set themselves up for success. I did that. Mm -hmm. I, made sure I practiced, I made sure I knew the material cold and I was, you know, um, in terms of preparation, that if anything went wrong, I, I wasn't going to be because of my preparation, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought that. But then the night before the actual training session, it was a two-day training session. I'll never forget that. I was nervous and I was panicking and I was so scared and, and those little voices were going crazy. And at that time, I didn't even have the distinction of little voices. I just thought there was something wrong with me. Yes. I'll never, I'll never forget this. I called up my manager, Jerry. And I said, and, and she was a very supportive manager. So I had the guts to call her. And I said, this is what's happening. I'm like, oh, what if I, I mean, what's, blah, blah, blah. and I started going on about all my, all, all of my um, uh, issues. And she said to me, Mary, Mary, stop, 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 stop. Shh. She goes, shh. Tell me what you're concerned about. What is your main concern? Mm. So as soon as she said, shh, I stopped. My little voices just stopped. And I, I got present. And I said, my main concern is I'm going to make a mistake. And she said, okay, here's what I want you to do. Tomorrow, when you get up in front of your, the audience, I want you to make 10 mistakes. I said, what? I said, <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> 10 mistakes. And she said, yeah, and if you don't make at least 10 mistakes, don't even bother coming back to me afterwards. <laughs> and, wow. I, and then, of course, I burst out laughing because I understood what she was trying to what do. What she was saying, yeah. yeah. It's not, I, it's not about perfection. Laugh, yes. I laugh, I, I broke myself out of that anxiety, right? Yes. But what she was helping me do was she was giving me permission to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. As soon as I felt like I had that permission that I don't have to be perfect, yeah, yeah. then the pressure came down. Way, way down, yes. Right, the pressure came down. Because here's, the, here's after years of training and after training thousands of people, here's what I, I want to tell you is the audience doesn't want you to be perfect. Perfect mm -hmm. is boring, right? Yes, perfect. yes very who wants perfect nobody but what do we want as an audience we want real we want real we want, we want vulnerability authenticity our authenticity yes authenticity and i'm, I'm i mean like i was telling you just because i know about this doesn't mean i'm exempt to it and just because mm -hmm. you know about it now doesn't mean you're exempt from it it's right just right present as it's coming up so that you don't let it stop you yes and then you don't let those um, interpretations in your mind stop you. Um, just one more last example I'll give you um, because it's a very common one that I, I yes. get a lot of people that I train and coach is being put off. Like you're on, imagine you're on stage and then there's someone in the audience who's like giving you a face. Like, yeah. Oh, and then you get put off by that and you, mm -hmm. you were, you were being confident you were doing really well you were getting in the flow and then you come across that face in the audience and then it mm -hmm. takes you out of your flow your back yes critic what do you do right so here's what i have to say from this i learned this from one of my mentors actually and that is um well i'll give you a perfect example i was speaking in front of a group of 50 engineers right mm -hmm. at the start of my career yes and there was this one woman sitting in the front row she was wearing a bright green jacket and she had her arms folded like this. And her whole, the whole time she was looking at me like this. Yeah. And wow. in, my mind, in my mind, I was thinking, oh my God, she hates what I'm saying. This is, she's just, she's hating every minute of this. She's being very defensive. She's got her arms folded. And it started to take me out of my flow, right? I kid you not, at the end of that training, she, ran, she was the first person that ran up to me 
and said, I want to buy all of your training materials. I want to buy. Wow, look at that. <laughs> wow, what a thought. Like, what? Oh, what a thought. <laughs> the person sitting there like this. And that's when I learned never to interpret someone's face. Yeah, yeah. Right. You don't know. This for her, this might be the way she focuses, the way she uh -huh. concentrates, right? As far as I know, her face. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But you never, ever know that what the person is thinking if someone's mm -hmm. joining the audience maybe they were in the emergency room last night with their son until 3 a.m you don't know yeah, you don't very true exactly make the assumption oh very my god true. boring right yeah it's like the saying don't judge a book by its cover you know don't judge a book by its cover yeah that's right so that's what i want to leave your listeners with the first one is yes. it's about comp competence leads to confidence so even when you don't feel confident speak up anyway and that eventually the confidence will come yes the second one is it's not about you the audience just wants to know what's in it for them so that takes the pressure off of you and the third one is don't be perfect be real and again that will take the pressure off give yourself permission to make mistakes and be real yeah, so that, that was amazing, Mary. Um, just awesome. And I'm just sure that everyone who's listening can definitely relate to it, not even just one, but all of those um, instances where, you know, we allow our inner critic, our self-judgment to show up and take control over us and cripples us, you know, and, and it, 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 it cripples us from being you know, there to serve the, our audience or to serve that person who is next to us. So now this is not only, like Mary said, that you have to speak in front of a small or large crowd. It could be just speaking to one person. It's in our communication. And, you know, um, public speaking is, it shows up when we open our mouth and it doesn't matter to who or where we are. It's very important. It's very important that we we acknowledge our inner critic or the, the inner voices that are negative and just, um, you know, keeping us dead in our tracks and preventing us from being real, being authentic, being, being there to share our message. Because what we have to say matters in this world. And you never know what you have to say, the impact that it will have on the person you're talking to or your audience, your viewers. So with that, <laughs> Mary, I definitely want to tell you thank you very much and um definitely i want to invite you guys for my new master class that's called intention over fear and it is launching july 10th in less than two weeks and it's four weeks of live coaching where you will be um definitely speaking to me again and um we will be going through the fears um that we as women go through I'm, I'm going to be um, showing you practical ways where you can quiet down and manage self-doubt, self-fears. And we're going to go into lessons regarding your motivation, lessons about um, courage to take that action. You know, definitely the wisdom to choose and to decide the path and the journey that you want to go on in order to redefine your life. And lastly, Mary, of course, is um, a guest, one of the many guest experts our trainers that's going to be um, providing you with a special bonus at the end of the masterclass. And this is only for um, my, my women who have paid and enrolled in this. And she will definitely be going more in depth with how to present yourself in public speaking and how you can tell your inner critic to shut up and the real you to speak up. So guys, definitely I will, will post a link at the end where you can schedule a 20-minute discovery call with me. It is absolutely free. It's absolutely compliment, complimentary because I want to speak with you, you that lady that wants to unlock that inner ability that's within you in order to get you to the next level of your life, whatever that next level may be like for you. And I want to speak with you so that I can... Um, definitely see if we're a right fit to work together and if you're a right fit for um, these women that's going to be a part of the masterclass this intimate mark masterclass is it's only going to be 15 people that's it cap so I definitely want you if you're serious if you're coachable if you're willing to learn and to take actions and implement what's learned along with taking feedback um, from myself as your coach and also the group so definitely um schedule a call um, by clicking the link 
and so that we can get to speak right away so that we can get you signed up for the program. And for Mary Sheen, if you love what she's saying, and I know that many of you do, and you're saying, yes, hell yes, that's me, that's me. Um, because that's how I was feeling when she's talking. I could relate to every single thing that she's saying pertaining to public speaking. And um, you can definitely um, email her, and I'm going to allow Mary to talk and tell you um, how you, know, you can email her for more information. And definitely, I know that she has a boot camp that's coming up. So Mary, please do take it away. Let us know um, how they can email you, your address, and tell us a little bit more about your upcoming bootcamp. Sure, thank you. So I wanted to let you know You're welcome. that I have a two-day intensive bootcamp coming up at the end of this year in December, December 9th. It's a Saturday and Sunday, December uh, 9th and 10th in the Boston yeah. area. And that is if you want more information about that or even information that we spoke about today or you want to join my email list because i do give regular tips on public speaking um, through my email list and yes. email is mary at magnetic podium.com again that's mary at magnetic podium.com and my website address is www.magneticpodium.com and if you want to download my book on Kindle, it's also available on paperback. Here it is. It's called Present Yourself in Public Speaking. Tell your inner critic to shut up and the real you to speak up. Awesome. Amazing. And of course, we will have um, Mary's information, her website, and her email address where you can sign up for her newsletter. Um, definitely on the comments thread um, on Facebook Live. And um, there it is. If you're just hopping on and you're like, what are we talking about? We are with the lovely, lovely Mary Sheen. And she is a Amazon best-selling author and also a public um, speaker, speaking train, trainer. I'm sorry, public speaking trainer. And um, definitely um, go back, watch the replay because Mary just went over the misconceptions that we all have about public speaking and pre presenting um, ourselves to others. So Mary, again, thank you so much um, for your time. I know that you're a very busy lady, but thank you so much for taking the time out um, to come on here and allowing me to interview you. And I want to publicly thank you as well for definitely um, agreeing to teaching um, my audience, um, my ladies, um, that will be joining my four weeks um, Intention Over Fear live group coaching masterclass that's coming up on July 10th. And I know that you're going to dive deeper and you will be adding much, much, much more value in the bonus section. And I just want to thank you. You're just an awesome person, an awesome individual. And I mm -hmm. want you to know that I really appreciate you. Thank you, Raki. And right back at you, by the way. I appreciate you. you building this community. I think it's an important community. And um, a space for us to empower ourselves and become the best of who we are, the best versions of ourselves. And yeah. you're doing that. You're creating this masterclass, which is going to support women in becoming their best versions of themselves. So I acknowledge you as well. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Mary. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for tuning in and we will definitely be seeing each other soon. Bye for now. Bye.